right, so it is December 11th, 2024, and uh, I'm here with Parker Levinson, our field crew leader and PhD student on the project, and uh, just going to get a recap of how this season went. Yeah, the end of the season, end of 2024, it's always a bittersweet moment. We spend so much time preparing and planning for the field season that when it's come to an end, it's, it's always a little hard for me to process. But the 2024 field season has been really successful. Something I love about this project is that every year is really different. And so there's always new things to learn and new challenges um, to overcome. 2024 was no different. We had an above average year of pup production. Um, so we had a, a little over 600 pups this year was pretty wild and every single pup in the study area got tagged which is our number one goal every year. It's been an interesting year though because despite having a lot of pups we're not actually seeing a lot of seals coming in from other areas. I would typically expect in a year with a lot of pups that we get seals from all over the area coming in to give birth here but mostly we're seeing seals that we tagged here when they were pups come back and give birth which is not what we've seen in recent years. And so we're not quite sure why this year we're having fewer animals coming in from other areas to give birth. Um, but that is something that we are continuing to look at and trying to figure out why that varies every year. It's also been really interesting. We've had a lot of young animals coming in, a lot of three-year-olds, four-year-olds, and five-year-olds, which we typically don't see. Um, so that's something we're curious about. Why are we seeing so many of those animals? And that might be because we're getting more pups every single year and so more of those animals are surviving and they're coming back to where they were born and we're reciting them or there could be something about this year that's causing a lot of young animals to come back and hang out in the colonies in a way that we haven't seen in, or i haven't seen in the last five years yeah so you said you've seen a lot of three four or five year olds is that and you've had some big birth cohorts in the last 10 12 years is that yeah, what's interesting is that the three, four, and five-year-olds aren't necessarily associated with a really large cohort. What was really interesting is we got a lot of nine-year-old moms this year. Um, and so nine-year-old moms were born in 2015. Um, and 2015 was one of the largest cohorts we have on record, um, followed by 2017. So we're getting a lot of seven-year-olds as well. And so there's something about these larger cohorts where more of the animals are surviving and coming back to our study area that's pretty interesting. Um, and as I said earlier, we're getting a lot of pups this year. We had over 600 pups, which is much higher than our average. And so another big cohort this year, and we'll see how many of them come back in the next couple of years. Yeah, so the, uh, the populations continue to be larger than it used to be, and you're getting some variability in how many animals born outside come in each year so great opportunity to try to learn as you said when we get that variation um what was the sea ice like this year the sea ice is if i wasn't studying seals i might study sea ice it's very interesting um the sea ice this year actually was really incredible it formed late so it's not as thick as it typically is normally it's um two over two meters so more than six feet deep like more sea ice than I am tall typically. Um, and this year the sea ice is about a meter, so it goes up to about my hip. Um, so it's about half the thickness it typically is in certain parts of the study area, but it's held up really, really well. We haven't seen a lot of movement on the sea ice and the ice edge has actually been really consistent. The water is not getting closer to where we're working. So despite forming later, has held up really incredibly. It has been a little challenging. Um, some of the sea ice has stuck around for a couple of years we call that multi-year ice. So we have some pockets of multi-year ice where the snow just builds and builds and builds. Um, and you get these giant snow drifts that are really hard to drive over on your snowmobiles. So that's been a pretty big challenge this year because there's nothing to do besides drive really slowly um, over these, these snow drifts and it adds a lot of time to our commute. One of the things I can't help but notice looking uh, at the camera image is that you only have um, lone pups around you and then one lone adult. It's a, that's pretty typical this time of year to see a lot of lone pups. Yeah, at the end of the season, um, all the pups are starting to get weaned. So they stay with their mom for six to seven weeks. Um, and then afterwards, their mom starts spending more and more time away and eventually mom leaves and the pups are um, left to fend for themselves. 
And so often you see pups still napping from when their mom left. Um, they're not quite sure what to do with their newfound independence. And they're all just hanging out and basking in the sun. You get a lot of pups that are wandering too, and so you'll start finding pups that are not near a colony. They're just exploring now that their mom's not with them. Um, and you get a lot of moms really far away from their pups, but you can tell that they at one point were together, and the moms are now taking some space after having such a close bond with their pup for a long time. Yeah, so we've got the uh, pups have been tagged. They're associated with their moms. We've got a handful of surveys done, so we know who was here other than just the moms. Uh, what's the end of season shutdown like? End of season shutdown, after we finish our surveys to see who's here that wasn't reproducing, um, and after we're done retagging all the animals, we end up cleaning up all of our gear. So today, one of the big tasks we were doing is pulling all of our safety roads basically put a bunch of um, bamboo flags in the sea ice to help us navigate when the lighting isn't great. And since we are no longer working on the sea ice, today's our last day at Big Razorback. And since no one else, there's no other science group working out on the sea ice right now, we're pulling all of the roads as we go back to station um, so that those bamboo can be reused in future years. We also then clean all of our gear. We have truckloads of, of gear we use from the gear shop down here from shovels to drills and all of that needs to be cleaned and returned to its rightful owner. Um, so we have probably four or five days of cleaning ahead of us after we're done working on the sea ice. So Parker, you're um, you're standing on frozen sea ice right now, right? I am standing on A little bit of snow ice, on there. The snow. So if we didn't clean those bamboos up, they would just end up in the ocean. Correct. Yeah, so it's a pretty clean operation. Um, all the waste and food and everything, any food waste and human waste, everything goes home. So that's great. Um, what was your take on the season? Was it a good one, an enjoyable one for you? I love every season. Um, 2024 was a great season. It was super fun um, to be out here. We had an amazing crew. Everyone worked really hard, learned a lot and collected some really good data. It was great. Jay was down the whole time. So it was really fun hanging out with Jay the whole season. And I just love being around the seals every year. We see different things, we have different questions, um, and it's fun to be around the study, the, the species that I study for so long, to really have, see their personality and put, put the personality with the, the numbers I see every single day. Yeah, last question we often get asked, um, any notable animals, any favorite animals, any like, wow, that is so cool? I, every animal is my favorite animal. <laughs> I have a couple favorite, this year we had um, a record breaker. We had a 34 year old female that we recited on one of those surveys. She didn't have a pup this year, but she was still hanging out. And that's the oldest seal we've ever seen before. Um, and she's also incredibly faithful. She is in the same spot that she always is. And we've seen her for the last 30 years in that same spot. So it's just really fun to see her. And I know that she's gonna be there. So every time I drive that corner, I look out and I wave to her cause she doesn't really move very much. <laughs> Um, another really notable seal that we had this year that we actually haven't talked about that much is a three-year-old male at Tent Island. And those of you who are familiar with the project may know that Tent Island is where we get a lot of young animals. So the fact that there is a three-year-old male is not super notable. But what's interesting about this dude is that he was born at White Island, which is an isolated colony of seals um, about 18 kilometers south from the open ocean. They actually reproduce on a glacier. Um, and up until the last couple years, we thought they were completely isolated from the Erebus Bay population. And we've recently seen a lot of, inter not a lot, we've seen some interchange between the two populations. And this three-year-old that we saw at Tent Island sort of marks a pretty big moment for animals leaving White Island, surviving through those really hard early years um, and making it, yeah, making it until they're three and still doing well out there. Um, so that was a really fun seal to see this year. Well, if you were with us yesterday, we had a male that we encountered at Hutton Cliffs. I think you came up as we kind of figured him out. I thought that one was interesting in a very different way. Yeah, that was a male. Um, we were doing some retagging yesterday, and it was a male that was missing some of its tag set. So we um, retagged it, and when we retagged it, we looked him up, and he was a 24 year old male, I believe which is pretty old for males. But what was interesting about him is his body condition wasn't very great. He seemed to be declining a little bit. So he was 
a really small seal despite being 24 years old. Um, and it's just, I think it just shows how fascinating these animals are and how much work has gone into this project that 24 years ago, someone tagged that animal and that we've basically been able to see his whole life until he reaches old age and his body is starting to decline and senesce as he gets older. Yeah. Well, thanks. Thanks for all those comments. That's great. Um, always, always amazing that the season goes so fast in two months. Well, and yeah, thank you all for following along. Um, it's been, it's always fun sharing the work we do. We work in a pretty remarkable area that a lot of people don't get to experience. And the work that we do, I think is unfathomable to a lot of folks. And um, I enjoy sharing what we do with people back home. Okay, one last, last question. You coming back next year? Oh, that's a rough question. <laughs> you can edit that one out, Mary Lynn. I am coming back next year. <laughs> Good to hear.